Right, the next part, the key ideas will be on uh, evaporation and condensation drive the water cycle. So here we are looking at water cycle in nature. Okay, question 33. Um, she plays a cup of water at room temperature in a desk. Okay, so keyword here is room temperature in a corner room where the temperature is kept constant at 28 degrees Celsius. Place a glass lid on the cup. And after a few days, there were water droplets on the underside of the lid. Okay, so I've got water droplets on the underside. Underside means this part here, so water droplets here. Okay, so which of the following statement explains the observation? So let's take a look. Evaporation condensation can take place at room temperature. Yep, so this is true. So remember, evaporation occurs at any temperature. Condensation, basically, when there's a cooler surface, it condenses. Now, condensation happens faster when a cup is not exposed to sunlight. Uh, now, based on this observation, I can't really tell whether it's it faster or slower because I got nothing to compare with. So three, the table is warmer than the glass, heats up the water, causing it to evaporate. Um, uh, no, because uh, they are all in the same room, they are at the same temperature. The glass lid cooled down at night, and so water vapor has condensed on the cooler surface. Uh, so although yeah, I mean it's true, glass lid cooled down at night, so water vapor is condensed. But that's not the the only reason, or that's not the reason why you see water droplets. Basically, if you look at the question, um, she placed in the corner of a room, so effectively it's quite cool as well already. Okay, so although for yeah, it, it seems possible, but one is the best answer. So for science, we always look for the best answer and. Basically, the fact that I see water droplets, it proves that evaporation and condensation has occurred. And because it's room temperature, so it's proof that uh, it can occur at room temperature. Okay? Now, question 34. So now I notice water droplets on the outside of the glass. I have ice, so this means that this is actually quite cold. Okay? So water droplets, where does it come from? So you have learned by now that the water droplets on the outside of a of a, of a cold glass of drink does not come from the ice cube in the glass because the glass is waterproof water cannot go out okay so it doesn't happen that way water leaking from the glass obviously is not if it's leaking you will see it dripping out somewhere not everywhere on the cup evaporation of water in the glass yes it's evaporating but that doesn't prove or that doesn't show me why there's water droplets outside here so my uh, the correct answer is four because condensation of the water vapor in the surrounding air. So the water vapor in the surrounding air, when it touches the cooler surface of this cup, it will lose heat, condense, and turn into water droplets. Thirty-five. So here is slightly different. Okay, here I have noodles and it's hot, fried, yummy noodles. Mm, okay, so why would there which which one will happen? Okay, so will there be water droplets on the outside? Remember, this is hot, so that means this is hot. So will this surface be be cool? No, this surface will also be hot. So if this is a hot surface, there won't be any condensation because this water drop, the water vapor in the surrounding air, will not be losing heat to the side of the glass. Okay, so you should not be seeing water droplets on the outside. So one is out. Uh, four is out. So now, which is it? I'm left with two and three. So what's going to happen now? The noodles, basically, because there's f moisture in the noodles, so the 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 water there'll be water vapor that will be lingering in the air. Okay. Now the the the, the lid and the side of the container, as compared to this hot water vapor, will be a lot more cooler. Now, I'm saying comparing with the hot water vapor, because hot water vapor is really hot. So this hot water vapor will lose heat, will lose heat to the side and the top of the, con of the container, and it will change into water droplets. So that's why you will see water on all sides. Okay, so option 3 is the correct answer. Because, oh sorry, option 2, if you look carefully, the water droplets on the outside. Okay, I know the printing is a bit horrible. So 2 is also out. So my only answer is 3. Okay, because the condensation will occur on the inside because of the hot water vapor on the inside. Now question 36. Let's take a look at this. So on day 1, I see water droplets on the on this side. After that, I see water droplets this side. So recall again, um, 
Water droplets will only occur on the side where it's warmer. So this is definitely warmer. So when the warm or the warm water vapor comes in contact with this cooler surface, so this part here is cooler, then it will condense and change to water droplets. So if I see water droplets here, it means that this side here is warmer and this side here is cooler. Okay, so that the warm water vapor will come in contact with the cooler surface and it will condense. So it's always a comparison. Okay, one side must be warmer than the other side in order for condensation to occur. Just like your glass of cup of ice water. So recall if I got ice water here. So this is cooler as compared to my surrounding air. So my surrounding air is warmer. Okay, see, notice, and that's why you see water droplets forming on the outside. Okay, so the water droplets will always form on the outside of the cooler surface. So, based on that, which one of the following correctly compares the possible temperature of air? So day one, outside is cooler, inside is warmer. So let's see, day one, outside is cooler, so my temperature should be low. Inside is warmer, temperature should be high. Okay. Now let's look at this. Day 2, outside should be warmer, so outside temperature should be high. Inside should be low because it's cooler, so my answer is 3. Okay, so that's how you decide what your answer is. Huh? So study the water cycle. Um, this is quite straightforward. Ocean to water vapor, what happens here? Evaporation occurs. That's why it changes to water vapor. Water vapor changes to clouds is because of condensation. Okay, so the water vapor will rise into the air and when it loses heat, it will change to water droplets and the water droplets group together to form clouds. Okay, so my answer is 4. Question 38 is very similar, so I'm not going to go through it. Answer is 2. Okay, so same concept as 37. Now this setup is a very common setup and this setup mimics uh, a water cycle. Okay, it's actually a model of the water cycle. So how does this setup resemble the water cycle? So let's take a look. Now, uh, only water from the muddy water is evaporated and the mud is left behind. So this is true. Uh, one thing about evaporation, only water is evaporated. So if I have mud, I have other things, salt and all these things, it will not be evaporated because only water evaporates. Okay. The plastic wrap is like the earth atmosphere, preventing water from escaping into space. No, huh? water can escape into space. The, 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 the atmosphere is not like a barrier. It doesn't prevent water from escaping. The pebble powers the process of the setup, how the sun powers the water cycle. Uh, no, the pebble does not give off heat. The sun basically is, uh, how it works is it gives heat. It provides the heat for evaporation to occur. Okay. Formation of rain in the water cycle and drops are the result of water losing heat to the surrounding. Yes. Okay, so why I have uh, water droplets because it loses heat. Form water droplets, it becomes clouds. When there are too many water droplets, it will fall as rain. So my answer is 4. Question 40. Um, this is also quite uh, obvious. Water cycle takes place continuously because of the sun. So our, the sun is a very important aspect of nature. Not just it provides heat and light, but it also allows us to get constant supply of water. Now let's look at 41. Eh? So she plays a clear flask. So this is one flask here. Okay, on a glass beaker. So this is a glass beaker. Alright, so I, I don't know how you, you can imagine this. So it's a glass beaker. She placed this flask on top of it. So it's sitting on top of the beaker. Okay, so this is hot water. So take note, this is hot water and this is cold water. Alright. So what will she observe after a while? So definitely the hot water, the water will start to evaporate. Am I right? And when it touches this cold water, this is the cooler surface, what's going to happen? It will form, yeah, water droplets. Okay, so this is what she will observe after a while. Huh? So water droplets on the bottom of the flask and on the inner surface, okay? Because the water droplets will also, uh, will also be forming here. Okay, because the inner surface of the glass is also much cooler as compared to the water uh, water vapor. All right, so you will see water droplets on this side, as well as the underside, as well as on this side. Okay. 
Now, so then Mary says that the cell is, is similar to the water cycle, filling the correct apparatus and the process that correspond to the water cycle in the blanks. So seas and rivers, what, what, which part of the setup is that? Well, it's this part here, the hot water. Okay. It's the hot water in the beaker. The process involved will be, yeah, evaporation. Now, how about the sky? The sky is much cooler. So the sky will be the bottom of the flask. And the process involved will be condensation. And finally, rain is the droplets, uh, the water droplets. Okay. That will fall back down and all these things. All right. So prepare another similar setup. But I changed the water condition, so let's take a look what's the change. Huh? So instead of this become cold water, this is now hot water, and instead of hot water, this becomes cold water. So basically, she switched it around. So what you're supposed to do is now is to draw what she will observe after a while. So if this is cold water, where would my water droplets be? So this is cooler, and this is warmer. Correct? My surrounding air will be warmer. And so what will I observe? Yeah, I will observe water droplets outside here. Okay? So this is the first thing you should observe. Alright, water droplets will be formed on the outside. And that's it. Is, is anything going to happen here? Okay? Now some of you may, 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 be, may uh, realize that actually there also might be water droplets here. Okay, because the hot water, the water vapor will evaporate and it will condense on the inner surface of the flask. So there's hot water, uh, water droplets here as well as the side of the uh, the beaker. Okay, so this is what she this is what she would be observing. Okay, so now let's take a look at this setup. Um, there's a few information here. So I've got ice cubes. Uh, a has ice cubes, but C, D, and B have no ice cubes. Huh? Then uh, the other difference is this is water at 10 degrees, this is 30, this is 90, and this is 90. Okay. Uh, the other difference is the cup. See, this is small cup, small cup, small cup. This is a big cup. Okay, so this one is different from the rest. Huh? Big cup. So there are a few things you need to observe and take note. So basically, Amiru did this on a normal day. Which, what is his aim? He wanted to find which setup will collect the most water given the constant temperature and shelter from wind. So I've got no wind and uh, it's constant temperature. So all of them have the same heat. All right. So in which setup will he observe to have collected the most water after a minute or uh, 30 minutes has passed? Okay, so let's see. Hmm. Let's go at A. Will A collect a lot of water? Well, no. Huh? If, because if you look here, 10 degrees Celsius, my water is going to be very cold. And for you know that heat uh, the rate of evaporation will be very low if I have very little heat. So A will not give me the most. Uh, how about C? 30 degrees, again, it's quite low temperature. Now, look at B and D. So these two are my two challenges. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees, both very hot water, water evaporating. So which one would uh, collect the most water? So if you see here, who has more water? Here I have this bigger amount of water as compared to this because my container takes up so much space. So here I have less water. But here I have more water. So given all other conditions the same, temperature the same, everything else the same, obviously the more water, more will be evaporated, more will condense, and more will drop down compared to the one with lesser water. So B is the one that will collect the most amount of water. Now question 43, so started boiling, observe water droplets on the inner surface. So you see water droplets here, water droplets here. So explain how the water droplets are formed. Again, this is uh, on condensation, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Here's the answer. So water in the bottle evaporates, changes to water vapor. Water vapor touches the cooler surface of the neck of the bottle, loses heat, changes to water droplets. So I think by now you should realize that for um, condensation, this is the way that we always explain condensation. So B, when she continues heating the water after some time, she observes that the water droplets disappear. Now, why is that so? 
So why that happens is because the water droplets will also start to evaporate. Because as the bottle starts to heat up, the water droplets will start to gain heat. When they gain heat, they will evaporate. And then as the surface of the neck of the bottle becomes warmer, it's no longer cooler as compared to the water vapor or the surrounding air. So there will be no water vapor that will be formed. Okay?